and welcome back to the channel Josh Helm here listen today we're actually at our shop I'm gonna to talk to you guys about battling humidity in Texas one thing you guys may not realize is that here in Texas we have a climate zone 3 it's kind of important for you to know what climate zone you're in territorially that helps us to understand basically what our building code requirements are when it comes to a lot of the insulating values that we use on our perimeters. So we're gonna dig into a few details today and kind of tell you how we battle against humidity when it comes to air conditioning on the inside of our builds. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get it going. So I'm actually here in a portion of my shop that's not insulated. And because we build primarily hybrid steel frame structures, uh, this kind of shows you what some of the raw steel looks like. Uh, we have purlins that run across. We have our roof panel that goes across the top. It's important because we gotta understand what components or what we're dealing with when it comes to potential condensation or conduction that can happen in an environment like this. Uh, now you guys are used to seeing us, uh, the way that we build all the steel that is basically spanning across the roof systems. And then we have more of a conventional type framing that we use on our wall systems, which are inside the bays. In those areas, we are using conventional wood framing with the zip system and our walls don't tend to be a problem, but we have to know how to deal with the steel in Texas. Uh, we're fortunately, we have a little more of a mid climate uh, than some of the extreme weathers that you can have in other parts of the country. So uh, here in Texas, I think it's around 65% humidity uh, that we can average through the summers. So we have to kind of combat against that. What are we gonna do with that humidity when it comes to inside? Uh, because the relative humidity is ultimately uh, more of a basis for us to determine comfort on, on the interior of our homes. Uh, so in our climate, we recommend that we might go to a whole home dehumidifier. But here, dealing with the steel, uh, there's a couple things that we got to consider how we're going to make sure that we don't have conduction and how we're gonna make sure we don't have condensation on the inside. So coming out of our shop, you can see this is our additional storage area, but here it's climate controlled. We've actually got air conditioning. We've got spray foam, which is a closed cell foam. Closed cell foam is how we deal with it in this type of an environment you've got to take the edge off. Here we recommend about an inch and a half to three inches. That should get it done when it comes to condensation, making sure that you're not having to worry about that. And that's what we typically do like in our shop areas, just enough to take the edge off where you're not worried about it. Now, does that mean that this doesn't heat up a little bit more? Um, absolutely, this will still put off quite a bit of heat. Even with having our air conditioning in here, it helps a lot like it's really comfortable in here today uh, but we're not quite into our hundred plus degree weather yet here in texas you know having the combination of both is is really even nice but i kind of keep a temperature gauge and we can have about 15 to 20 degrees difference say in a shop area like this but when we're dealing with our living quarters which is what we have on this side uh, we have living quarters down below and we have it up top. Uh, there, we have to treat this a little bit differently. Uh, so there's a couple things to keep in mind. You don't want to oversize your HVAC units because what can happen is you're blasting so much air and then it's not, uh, it cuts off really quick, not allowing you to now process this air conditioning. So one of the things that we've learned here in probably the recent years is we've been doing a lot better job of being able to get our air tightness on our homes because we use the spray foam and we've been getting pretty decent scores when it comes to our ACH for like a blower door test. Uh, the reason why having air tightness is important 
it, en it enables us to control uh, what's happening on the outside. Let's say you, you had pollution, high pollution, you had uh, maybe fires in your area, smoke's not coming in. There's a way that we can kind of gauge and protect ourselves from maybe allergies, dust in the air, all these kind of things. So that's great. But now what are we going to do about the inside condition? This now becomes a focal point whenever you build for air tightness. It's not something that so much in past we've really tried to embrace that much. But as you build a tight home, now you really need to consider, okay, what kind of quality of air are we, are we putting back into this home? And how are we conditioning it over the length of time? Everything that we've been doing uh, in the past has been great, but it's like now we want to really hone in on our focus here of air quality, better performance when it comes to getting the stale air out and now focusing in on having the right amount of humidity in the home. And in most cases, even in this Texas climate where we're like a zone three, um, we're finding that it's better for us to really recommend going to a whole home dehumidifier in every one of our builds. Uh, this is something that we're starting to kind of promote out there for our clients, making recommendations that they do that. Um, this is something that we can do on the air conditioner unit itself. We've done this on quite a few of our projects in the past, but now we're starting to recommend it on all the projects. Why do we want to do that? Because we can actually put it in line where the dehumidification is happening uh, as a part of the major overall system. Can a variable speed unit dehumidify? Yes, it can, but it's not to the amount to keep up with some of the humidity levels that we face here, even in this climate. There's a couple things that we really need to focus in on. Number one, we need to focus in on vapor barrier. Uh, now you guys that know how we build, we build with the zip system. That is a vapor barrier. In our most preferred methods, we can get that zip up on the roof as well. If we don't, if we're not enabled to have a completely encapsulated zip product going all the way around, we use a closed cell foam and that enables us to create a thermal break, helping to eliminate thermal bridging uh, that way uh, you're preventing the option from conduction as well as any transfer of say condensation through extreme cold weather adjustments. So the first thing that we're doing to combat against humidity is a vapor barrier. The second thing that we're doing is our air barrier. Now, what are some additional things that we're doing to achieve a complete air barrier is we're focusing in on some of our air sealing around pipe penetrations, these kind of things that happen and go through the wall. Um, you guys may not be aware, but moisture can actually travel and migrate through air. So if you've got an opening, say, where there's a pipe or electrical conduit, that moisture can come in, can cause rot, mold, uh, all these kind of things in our wall and can help cause problems and pollute whatever the environment is on the inside. So we gotta do a really good job sealing up all around the seals. Number three is gonna be HVAC and dehumidification. So we've started offering to our clients whole home dehumidifiers, whether we even have a variable speed HVAC unit on the inside. You got so many factors when you're trying to figure tonnage on HVAC, but a lot of these factors get determined by doing a manual J or doing a sizing based on the, the size of your home. It'll tell us a lot more information about uh, the load calculations and all the kind of stuff that you need as far as tonnage goes. A good rule of thumb is uh, for homes that are not going to be encapsulated or have an envelope. Uh, in the past, it was like 500 square feet per ton. Now we're able to figure closer to like 750 uh, and above per ton on square footage. So that gives you a good rule of thumb if you're trying to kind of know what size units you're gonna need. It's important that we don't oversize the units because now 
you're just causing a blast of air and then it's gonna shut off. You're gonna maintain maybe a temperature, but doesn't mean you're gonna deal with the quality of air on the inside. So you could have a temperature that might somewhat seem comfortable, but it has a lot of humidity in there. And there's different humidity levels at different levels. Like in a room like this, I could have a, say a humidity that's comfortable here, but a higher humidity, just a few feet higher. So that's something to keep in mind is that humidity is changing at different levels in the home. Uh, that's why it's important to have a fan like my beautiful macro air fan that I've got here. Uh, this is a 12 foot HVLS fan. So we're able to move the air, all that hot, maybe icky sticky humid air from the top and push it down allowing that to cycle back through. Uh, that's one key thing that you can do, and it's part of the whole air conditioning uh, of your space. So those are some other things that you can do to battle against humidity in the home and to maintain comfort. Uh, so I recommend getting a reader that you can get on Amazon or, or online. You can get them pretty affordably, even though they all read at different levels, but you could get pretty much a barometer for pressure and understand what type of humidity levels as well through the home. These are things that we can do to gauge and have a baseline, which is important to understand what's happening in my home in this season versus the others. Uh, and sometimes if you don't have, say, a dehumidifier in your existing home, this is something that could easily be adapted or added on or you could get a plug, one that you can plug in and just let's see, see what kind of levels you can uh, make to change. So we're gonna be doing more videos like this in the future uh, based on build science and best practices and all the things that we're doing in our area. But realize that it's different in different areas. So just because we do it this way here, doesn't mean it would always work maybe in some of the Northern climates. Keep that in mind as you're trying to maybe talk to your contractor or understand what you need to do for your area. It's gonna be different based on the climate zones. So we're a zone three, you might be a four or a five. So that's gonna change dramatically on what's required on the outside of your envelope, including your insulation factors and all the R factors that you're doing there. So um, it's all good stuff. Appreciate you guys following along. If you haven't already subscribed, Please do that now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Josh Helm, wishing you all the best. Thanks for watching Texas Best.